Jesus. All right, hi everyone. Hi Elena, how are you? Um, so I'm gonna wait. Hi. Just a hey, how are you? Good. Good. Are you teaching tonight? I am. Awesome. Debbie's doing something with her car. Something. Getting her car fixed or something like that. Okay. So, cool. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I think this is actually already. It's automatically recording. <laughs> so we'll wait just a minute here and then we'll go ahead and get started. And I will actually, I'll, get my, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully this works the way that it should. Let's see here. Um, no, I think it's... Yeah, I had some technology issues. Okay, wait, this is, I guess this will work. I think this is in a different format from what I had before. It looks can good. You, can you still see me? Yes, I can see you. Okay, cool. So yeah, I had to figure out how to get the PowerPoint so that it, you could still see me and see the PowerPoint. <laughs> so. Fun stuff because my computer isn't working. So anyhow, it's been technology is awesome. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It but, looks um, good. What? What'd you say? Oh, it looks awesome right now. I can see the screen and I can see you. Okay, awesome. Yay! All right. Well, I'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and get started, and people can kind of hop on or watch the recording um, when it gets posted. But um, I'm excited to talk to you guys tonight about natural cleaning and um, using essential oils in your kitchen, your bedrooms, and your living spaces. Um, 
I have been using doTERRA oils for probably, oh, I think almost about seven, seven years, I think. Um, and uh, we use them in all aspects of our life. And, um, and I love, I love the ability to um, use these oils to also clean my home. And um, over the course of you know the years, we've um, we've really kind of narrowed down the, the products that we use, um, and um, use a lot naturally based products to clean our home. And I love it because my kids can help me um, with cleaning, and I feel that it's very safe. I don't have to worry about my pets or my kids um, and toxic uh, chemicals in our home. Um, and so it's very, very rare that we use um, a lot of uh, commercial type of cleaning products. Um, we use what doTERRA offers. They have some, uh, some products that we'll talk about that will save you time um, if you don't have time to make stuff, because sometimes there is that, that aspect where sometimes I just flat out just have, haven't had time to make something. It doesn't take very long though. Um, I will tell you that it's very, very simple to make these products, um, but there are some kind of basic things that you'll need to get started. Um, and I'll share with you kind of some of the things that you'll want to have on hand um, so you can start making some of these things um, that we're going to talk about tonight. And um, also just to share with you just a little bit about me and, and who I am. Um, I already mentioned that I've been using doTERRA for uh, about seven years now. And I um, am a holistic health coach, and I'm also a wellness advocate with doTERRA. And I have three little spunky redheads, ages two to nine, and um, they keep me on my toes. <laughs> so, um, and I think as we're thinking like this month, um, we're focusing on cleansing as a whole and um, cleansing and detoxifying. And this is an area where, um, this is just another space where you can look at, you know, cleaning, um, you know, cleaning and detoxifying our bodies, cleaning and detoxifying our living spaces. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and kind of move forward. I did want to mention a couple things about, um, okay, this one I couldn't get out, but that's, we're going to skip that because it's no longer available. So I'm not going to tell you guys about that one. But um, this month, um, as a team and as a group, we are doing a cleanse. And if, for those of you that aren't familiar with the cleanse, um, we usually try to do a, um, a group cleanse at least twice a year, usually in the spring and the fall, which are a really great time to cleanse when the seasons are changing and um, it's kind of a, a time to kind of detox, let go, kind of do that spring cleaning. Um, and so we've been doing this cleanse um, and I'm trying to think, I think we started April, April 1st. Um, and so as of right now, Debbie did want me to mention as far as what, um, if you're doing the cleanse, what things that you're taking right now. So you're still doing your um, lifelong vitality pack. Um, you're also still doing the DDR Prime, your uh, Terrazyme, and then you're also doing the PB Assist. So we're kind of in that restorative phase of the cleanse, um, which that's going to help to re-inoculate uh, your, your gut with those good um, microbes and um, also with the, the prebiotic um, that that um, probiotic has. <laughs> Um, helps to feed those good guys so that they will proliferate and, um, you know, in your gut. And it's a great product because it also is double encapsulated, so it can actually survive the stomach acid um, and get to where it needs to go um, and help you to have, you know, a healthier um, immune system. Um, those little gut microbes um, have a lot to do with your health, so it's a really important part. Um, and then also you're going to continue with your lemon and your water um, throughout the day. So that is um, what we're just going to mention about the cleanse. And if this is something, um, you know, if you haven't done a cleanse yet, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and, uh, you know, even if you haven't jumped on the band bandwagon now, you can always do this on your own. doTERRA has all the tools and resources to let you know how to go through it. Um, but you can always reach out to um, whoever 
is introduce you to doTERRA and just let them know, hey, I am ready to kind of do a reboot and a, and a detox to help give me that fresh start. Um, and it's a great way to um, start to make some changes and put it alongside with that. So, all right. And then also um, this month, uh, doTERRA has the Try Ease available, which you can get 10% off on this product right now. And um, it's awesome. It's amazing. I love the Try Ease. Um, I actually just got back from Mexico um, a week, or actually, yeah, a week ago, Wednesday. We got back last Wednesday, and we were in Puerto Vallarta. We, me and my husband went. We took our three kids. And the second night we were there, we went out to dinner, and um, I had some mahi, some fish, and um, I've never reacted to fish before. <laughs> But I had a reaction and I had a full on, um, I broke out in hives, I had a headache, I, um, I had heart palpitations, I was shaking, it was pretty um, intense and I felt awful. Um, I went, once I realized what was happening, I grabbed my tri -ease and, um, hi Marlene, welcome. Um, I grabbed my tri ease and I and I took that. I, mean, I wish I could show you guys the pictures. Um, maybe I can post them later. But um, uh, within basically 15 minutes of taking the tri ease, like my my heart palpitations calmed down. My um, my hives that I had all over my body completely like. I mean, it was just very. You could see just a small amount of it in just partial areas of my body, but I had it like everywhere. Um, so it's really, really great, um, uh, kind of like a natural Benadryl, you know, um, but it also works for helps with, you know, seasonal, um, stuff. If you kind of deal with like all the pollen and the things like that, it's really great for that. It's basically lemon, lavender, and peppermint that's in the tri -ease, but this is a really easy way to take it. Um, and I will tell you, I was so grateful that I brought some tri -ease with me. I don't generally deal with seasonal stuff, but, um, you know, as much and blessed in that way. But um, sometimes I do react to food. And so if I have a reaction with food, that helps me there, um, which is why I brought it. And I had no idea that I was going to have quite the reaction that I did. But tri -ease is amazing. So add that to your wish list if you don't currently have it. It's a really great, great thing to have on hand. Okay, so we wanted just to talk about some of that. I'm going to skip this next one. Well, because um, it's not pertinent to us anymore, so don't mind that. But um, okay, so here is doTERRA's Wellness Lifestyle Pyramid. And this month, um, the area that we are focusing on is reducing toxic load. So we're lo looking at reducing toxic load with our bodies. We've been doing the cleanse. Um, and also looking at, uh, we've been focusing on um, Re reducing the toxic load in our homes um, and our environments, which is, you know, obviously an area that not everybody thinks about. And I know, I, you know, I've been on this wellness journey for, for quite a few years now. And, I, you know, I, I kind of slowly made transitions. And, you know, you've got to kind of start with where you're at. Um, and even if that's just making one, one thing um, and starting there and just being like, okay, I'd love to try that. Um, I think however you can start, just not overwhelming yourself, but starting with something um, so that you can replace a product that maybe that you've used in the past to maybe clean your mirrors um, or something like that. Because when you look at the, the chemicals um, that are used in a lot of these products, um, they cause a lot of um, issues for people. Um, and and there were just, we're just then therefore exposed to more um, toxins. Um, and so whatever you can do, I mean, um, I don't know what the number is, but as far as like the, the different types of chemicals that are in our environment and in our food, it's, it's outrageous. I mean, this is in numbers that have never existed in history before because we've created them. We've created all these new chemicals um, and those things show up in your, in your body um, and that can really prevent you from having the health that you desire and that you want when your body is bogged down with toxins. Um, and so this is just another area to look at. Um, I think also when you're looking at, um, I think we'll talk about it later, but you know, when you're looking at your skincare, what you're putting on your body, um, these are all things, like I said, you have to start somewhere, but having the awareness um, is kind of the first step. 
um, that these things matter and um, and then just working a way to fit it into your lifestyle just like you know as you're adding in essential oils and you know um, it's all part of this um, wellness lifestyle so that's kind of the area that we're going to be um, focusing on today and we've got some great recipes to share okay so why why green cleaning? Why would you want to do this? I've already mentioned some of that, but one, it's just, it's safe. It's safe for you and your family and your fur babies. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's something that I feel very safe having my kids help me with. Like my daughter will clean the bathrooms now. She's nine. That's kind of one of her chores. Um, and I can have my little kids like cleaning the cupboards and, um, you know, helping me with different things. And I don't have to worry about them spraying it into their mouth because um, generally it's, they may not like the taste because it might have vinegar in it, <laughs> but it's not harmful. Um, and for me, that's really important, important to have something safe that um, I don't have to worry about the kids getting to and, and you know, having poison, having to call poison control. So um, that's one reason, um, but it's also really, really affordable to make these products. I mean, when you look at um, natural cleaners and if you go to Whole Foods or I, you know whatever kind of natural food store that you have, um, or even Target has a lot of things now too, but you go and you look at how much it costs for just like one bottle of like a natural cleaner, it's, it's actually pretty expensive. Um, and I look at what I spend on my doTERRA stuff, and once I have kind of some of the things that I need, it's so cheap um, to make to make these products. Um, and they work. <laughs> so that's the other thing that you want, is you want a product that's effective um, and that you know is going to actually clean the area. Um, and instead of smelling chemicals, you're smelling essential oils and they make you, like, at least they make me happy. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I, um, I love smelling essential oils. Like, um, you know, when I clean my, my toilet, I add some lime essential oil to that and lime helps with, um, that kind of that buildup or the kind of from the, the water and, um, helps to kind of break that down. The lime oil does. And, um, and it smells good. I mean, who knew that cleaning your toilet could be at least, you know, palatable. <laughs> you know? So, um, and they're really environmentally friendly. So if that's something that matters to you, um, which it does to me, is it's good for the environment and, um, and it's good for your pockets. So, all right, that's why we want to do these things. And we're going to talk about some of the must-have oils that you want to have have on hand um, that are going to be um, used in a lot of your cleaning but uh, lemon is a very cleansing oil it's also really helps with kind of grimy uh, sticky gunky kind of stuff so if you've got that gunk in your your bathtub or in um, uh, wherever you've got that um, the lime wild orange uh, douglas fir eucalyptus Melluca, we use Melluca a lot in our cleaning stuff, our cleaning products. Um, Purify, which is an amazing uh, blend of oils, and that's known as our cleansing blend. And um, it's a really great um, oil to have on hand for just, you know, whenever you're wanting to clean. Thyme, peppermint, um, peppermint's really great. We use peppermint a lot as well. And then you have the On Guard um, Protective Blend. Um, and that's just basically the on guard oil and um, you can use that in your your cleaning and then there is this is kind of like my cheat thing that I use but this is the on guard cleaner concentrate <laughs> and we use this I have a bottle of this let me just show you I have these cute little labels and you can find like fun little labels to put on your stuff to kind of label what you have um, I think I got mine at aroma tools um, and I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can, but, um, let's see here. Is this still, I hope it's still recording, but, um, hopefully it is. But, uh, this is basically just the on guard cleaner concentrate and, um, and water. And I have a bottle of this in every one of my bathrooms under the sink. And, um, 
this is something that you can use to just as a multi-purpose cleaner. So just kind of for like your kitchen countertops, your bathroom, you know, counters. Um, but you can also use it um, for your dishes. You can make it more concentrated. Um, you can use it in your bathrooms. Um, and it's super easy. And I think this bottle is like, I don't know, I want to say it's like 13 Thirteen dollars or something like that. Maybe it's fourteen, um, and this will last you forever. Like I, it's usually like a tablespoon. What I use for just multi-purpose, or you can use a couple tablespoons if you're making it more concentrated. Um, but it'll. I mean, you you can't beat that price. I mean, that might be like one cleaner, <laughs> and you get like I don't know how many cleaners, but a lot. Um, but I I love it, and this this is kind of my like my lazy way of making my DIY cleaner. All you gotta do is pour it in and um, I've got a cleaner made. Um, so, all right, so we're gonna get into some of these. So, um, and this may be something that you've never even thought about, but like your dishwa dishwasher detergent. Um, Cause if you think about it, you know, most of the time we're using all these chemicals. If like we don't even know, right, what's in that dishwasher detergent. I mean, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know what they're putting in there. And then how much of that is actually getting rinsed off of your dishes um, is another consideration. Um, and then we're eating off of that, right? We're eating that and we're potentially, you know, if it's not getting completely cleansed off, like there may be remnants of that left on and that's getting into our bodies. Um, so this is something that you can make. So washing soda, you may have not heard of that, but this is like, this is one that I have. This is like an Arm, Arm & Hammer brand. Um, but it's basically just like a detergent booster. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Let me see what it says that it's made of. Um, I don't know if I can find the ingredient list. Where is it? Yeah, it says it's like sodium carbonate. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what's in it, but um, that's something that you can find. So washing soda. And then um, Borox, which you can find this at most places. I've seen it at like, you know, Walmart and uh, most places have this. And you can use it as a, it's a detergent booster. Um, it's all natural, um, helps to neutralize odors and remove stains. And we use this in like laundry as well too. You can add it in there um, and you can mix it with some essential oil, um, but you can also use it for this, um, you know, this recipe here. So a cup of the washing soda, a cup of Borox, uh, six to 10 drops of on guard or lemon. And you can pre, um, you know, make this and put it in a little container. Um, but keep in mind, it is a powder. Um, and Debbie did mention that um, what she will do, you know, so it doesn't, she doesn't want like, obviously, if it, if it leaves a residue, depending upon what, how your washing, your dishwasher works, um, you can look at adding some vinegar to the, um, uh, the rinse area, like usually you have like a little place in there where you can like put in the, the rinse stuff to help kind of keep it from spotting. Um, and the, the white vinegar will be helpful there. You could add some essential oil, but I just would be cautious because of the plastic. Um, but that would be up to you, but that's something you could try that would help kind of with the, the cleanse, the, the rinse cycle um, of that. But that's um, a great um, alternative. Um, and you can put it in a little container, have it ready made, and just take your little scoop and put it in there. Um, it would be awesome to see if Deter made some little, you know, thing that you could put in there. Wouldn't that be cool? So maybe we'll tell him I, we want something. <laughs> um, okay, so wood polish. Um, I've got a recipe here, and I have another recipe that I can share with you too that I have um, that I have made myself. Um, and actually, I think it's fairly sim similar. It is. Yep, that's the same one that I've used. Okay, so this one has a fourth a cup of olive oil, a fourth a cup of vinegar, um, and you can use a variety of, um, I've mainly used lemon, but you could use arborvitae or wild orange and in an eight ounce uh, glass spray bottle. Now some of these things, um, obviously you might already have on hand. Um, you can use you know, some recipes call for like an apple cider vinegar, but you can also use a just white vinegar. Um, I usually buy like a big thing of it for like all, all of my cleaning and I keep it under my sink. We don't use it to 
to cook with or anything, but it's kind of more so for cleaning. Um, and uh, and it's if you use the white vinegar, it's lighter. It's not the the as pungent as an apple cider vinegar. It's that's pretty pungent smelling. So if you don't like the smell of that, go with the white vinegar. Um, and uh, so I have this. Here's my little furniture polish. And you just want to make sure you shake it before you um, spray. And and I think too, um, depending upon what you're using. But if you have like your cloth, you can. Um, spray it on your cloth first and then apply it to your wood. And you do wanna be careful depending upon what you're using. Um, if there's some kind of like finish, like if you have like in, like instruments um, or uh, you know, like a piano, Debbie mentioned that too, like polyurethane on it. Um, you might not wanna use it on that just because it has like a protective plastic on it. So, you know, just maybe test spot an area, make sure that it's, that it's okay. But besides that, for most of your wood furniture, it's really, it's really simple, super cheap, and, um, and it smells good too. So, all right, there's the wood polish. So if you want to, you can take a screenshot of any of these. <clears throat> um, and if you want to, if you didn't catch anything that we had and you didn't write it down, um, just post once we after the post the video and <clears throat> we can we can repost the recipe if you missed it so and um their Tapera also has if you go to their um their blog they've got some really great uh recipes diys that you can find and make or just google stuff um, i'm always googling things um trying different recipes i've got lots of different books so these are just some suggestions um, that you can try and uh, this is a stovetop cleaner. Again, this would be something you'd kind of, you'd make it all, put it in a container. Um, I usually like to put, just if I'm using the essential oil, like, you know, in like ceramic or something, I mean, you can, you're not gonna be, usually, if you're gonna be using it all, it's not gonna be there for very long, and I'm not consuming it in my body. If, if all you have is plastic, you know, you can use plastic, but um, I tend to go for like a ceramic or glass. Um, when I'm using the oils and um, but a fourth a cup of baking soda salt um, a fourth a cup of a, a table salt a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar two tablespoons water and some of the purify um, now keep in mind because it has the salt um, you know if you have uh, not like an abrasive um, uh, I don't know what you call it an, an abrasive thing to um, use if you can use something um, a little bit more gentle, just like a, I can't think of the right word that I'm thinking of, but it's what you use to like wash your dishes with, um, not like an abrasive um, sponge. Sponge, that's the word I was looking for. Um, and uh, yes, okay, so that's your stovetop cleaner. And, um, but I've even just used two. Um, I've used just the, um, it, depending on how grimy it is, this is if you've got more like grime and buildup, but a lot of times I just use my, um, right here, my on guard cleaner and, um, you know, and then if you need to, you kind of do this, you know, when you really need to do a deep cleaning, then you go for the, um, using the baking soda and some of the other ingredients that helps to break up all the, the grime. Um, and it works really, really well. You'd be surprised <laughs> how well these work. Um, okay. So cleansing wipes. And I have yet to make these. I know that I should. I don't really use um, any um, Lysol or Clorox. Um, I, I mainly just use, um, yeah, I just use my, this is a, is a lot of what I use. And, and I have made stuff in the past. Um, and I haven't been making it as much just with having little ones. It's been a little bit more challenging to find the time. But again, it doesn't take much time. And I have to remind myself of that. You know, literally it just takes a couple minutes to just, you've got the ingredients, you just pour it together and voila, you have it. Um, but it's putting the attention and the focus on it. So, um, but the DIY cleansing wipes, I know Debbie has made these and um, she says that they are awesome. But you basically take, um, you know, a premium paper towel, whole roll, you cut it in half. However, you can figure out to do that if you do it with like a, a sharp knife or scissors um, and uh, you use two cups of hot water, 
two tablespoons of fractionated coconut oil and um, three drops of the On Guard and three drops of the lemon and about one to two tablespoons of the On Guard uh, foaming hand wash. Um, and I, we haven't really talked about the On Guard foaming hand wash, but this is, um, I mean, we have this in our kitchen. We use it in all of our bathrooms and it's a concentrated um, foaming hand wash that basically you add, um, I usually fill this up about halfway, just depending upon how concentrated you want it, you know, you fill it up with that and then the rest with water and it basically foams up. Um, but that's what you're using in this recipe. And um, you basically put all, combine all those things in a bowl and you pour that mixture over the paper towels and put it into an airtight container. And um, then you basically discard the, you know, you have to kind of turn it over. So I guess you get both sides, discard the cardboard tube and you're ready to use. So um, the DIY cleansing wipes. So maybe you put that on your wish list to try. All right, um, dish soap. So I, and, and I also um, was just going to mention, so I, in the beginning, um, I'd sometimes buy the On Guard uh, hand soap, but I've also made my own too. And um, I have a recipe here, which is, um, and this, this rope here, all, this recipe also uses the Castile soap. So the one that I have is, the brand is Dr. Bronner's, um, but you can use any Castile soap. It's basically, Castile soap is like a blend of um, a bunch of different uh, oils, and if I could find the ingredients in it, I could confirm that for you, but it's basically, here it is, like it's got coconut oil, olive oil, hemp oil um, and then it's got like citric acid and a few other things but it works really well for um, cleansing and I use that in a I've used that in a hand soap that I've made um, which basically has the Castile soap um, fractionated coconut oil and 10 drops of essential oil so you can make your own too so that's an awesome option as well all right so here we have the dish soap and this would be something that you would make in advance. Um, now keep in mind, because it doesn't have all of the solvents and the, um, the you know, the, I don't even know, all that cr the crazy ingredients that most dish soaps have. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't set up. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're using it. If you're expecting suds, it's not gonna sud. Um, I, I don't know if there's something out there that would naturally, that would make it do that, but, um, you know, that's certainly something to look at. <laughs> but you basically take two cups of the unscented uh, Castile, I'm not even gonna say it, Castile soap, and um, 20 drops of lime, eight drops of lemon, and six drops of citrus bliss, and then you get a really nice um, smelling. Because on, on its own, it doesn't really have much of a smell, but um, I know people that use this as like their, you know, their body wash, their, you know, it's kind of an all soap that you can use for all kinds of stuff. Um, and I, I use it in a lot of DIYs that I make. So, all right, so take a picture of that if you want to know, if you wanna keep that one. All right, and then we have a natural stone cleaner. And this would be, um, you know, if you have natural stone in your, uh, in your shower, or maybe you have a natural stone um, countertop, um, maybe you have just natural stone, um, you know, in your kitchen floor. Um, and uh, this is a great recipe to try where you use, um, you know, basically the, the rubbing alcohol. Um, we've, got, we've got some of that here. Oh, no, that's witch hazel. Um, yeah, I think that's just your, just your basic rubbing alcohol. Um, so half a cup of this, uh, a cup and a half of water, and you can use the On Guard um, oil and a little half a teaspoon of the Castile, <laughs> Castile soap. Now I can't even say it. Um, I'm saying it wrong. Um, but you basically put that all into like a 16 ounce glass spray bottle, 
I think this is a little bit bigger than a 16 ounce. I think this is a 24 ounce bottle. Um, but you just basically shake it and spray it over and wipe, wipe it away with a soft cloth. Um, you can also use some other oils like lemon, grapefruit, or basil. Um, all work really well for yeah, cleaning your natural stone um, in your kitchen or in your bathroom. So take a picture of that if you want to. All right, so lime scale remover. Um, this is great. Um, I don't know if you have like, um, uh, you know, where you get the buildup of the lime. Um, this can be used uh, if you need to in your, in your toilet or in your bathtub. Um, this can also be used um, any, you know, around your, your sink. Um, even in areas like your, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of it, like my, my tea kettle um, that kind of tends, it, you know, it can kind of tend to build up if, you, if it has water, if water kind of, any place where water kind of can sit um, and uh, kind of starts to develop that, um, you know, bit of, bit of uh, lime there. This, or the scales, this can help remove that. Um, and you have a half a cup of baking soda, three tablespoons of water, 10 drops of lemon, and 10 drops of lime. And um, you basically combine the three together and it makes into a paste. And then you put some on the surface. Um, so this can kind of help, you know, shine up your um, uh, silver. And hi, Janelle, welcome. Um, <laughs> Uh, on, on any place where you, you know, on your faucets and areas like that, where you can kind of, where it gets scaly. So if you want to, you can take a picture of this recipe before we move on to the next one. So we're just kind of going through some of our DIYs here. Um, all right, so this is a floor cleaner. And um, this is, you know, where you could kind of make a, a large amount of it in advance and store it. Um, I mean, I have used plastic in some instances, um, you know, but I generally try to use glass um, as much as I can. But in some cases, you know, it, I do use, um, if you know, if that's all I have is something plastic, you can put it in that. But this is, you'll take a gallon of warm water um, and uh, two tablespoons of liquid uh, Castile soap. Um, you got the Douglas fir, um, the white fir, cypress, and lemon. And basically you can add the soap and that to a bucket of warm water. So in this case, I mean, I think it's probably fine to use just whatever kind of bucket that you have. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, might be something you don't want to use for other things because you're using it to clean your floor. Um, but you can use that to mop um, or, you know, take rags and, and clean that way. And um, you can also put it into a spray bottle and you can use that for cleaning countertops. I mean, the awesome thing about the oils is you have so many options and choices when it comes to what you want to use and what you prefer, what kind of scents that you like. Um, but this kind of, um, we're all familiar with the, the pine, I think it's called pine saw that every, you know, you could clean your floors with. Um, but the nice thing about this is it does not need to be rinsed off and um your you know your fur babies are are fine to you know lick it up it's not going to hurt them um and uh it's a really great um recipe to try so um i'm gonna if you want to take a picture of that go ahead and then i will we'll move on to our next page here all right fruit and veggie spray so i what i will say is i i um Sometimes I am lazy and I go for the very basic on this, um, but uh, but this is if you want to really really make sure that everything's nice and clean, um, using the baking soda and the apple cider vinegar with your water and the lemon, um, and I have made that in before and it works it works great. But sometimes I just take my like I have this one that I made forever ago. And it sits next next to my kitchen sink, and um, and sometimes I just add I don't know what size bottle this is it might be like a 
four ounce bottle, I think. Um, but yeah, I just basically fill this and I put, um, you know, or maybe it's an eight ounce, I don't know, four to eight ounces. Um, and I just put, I just put it with, fill it with some water, some filtered water and lemon oil and I shake it up and I just spray my produce. But um, you can also soak it too. Um, if you've got stuff that's kind of harder to, to do, you can just take your, your lemon oil with water and soak your fruits and veggies. Um, and I think the important thing to know is like, why would you even want to do that? Um, but a lot of um, fruits and veggies um, are, you know, sprayed with different things and, you know, whatever you can do to help um, rid your, rid your, fruit and veggies of the pesticides and herbicides that are used in conventional produce. But even if you're buying organic, you know, sometimes you have little, you know, little bugs that remain on your, your veggies kind of hidden in, in between like your kale. Um, and uh, I like to kind of give it a nice, a nice spray and soak and I, that way I get off the dirt and everything. Not that dirt is bad, but I don't really want it in my salad. So um, the fruit and veggie spray, um, is one that I use all the time um, and uh, take a picture of that. This one recommends a 16 ounce uh, glass spray bottle, but you could kind of use whatever you have on hand. And I was going to mention too, um, doTERRA has um, in there, if you're, if you're on your account and you're ordering stuff, they have an accessory section now where you can order um, some of the, the things that you would need, but they have where did I put it? Um, let me see if I can find it. But it was here, but I can't seem to find it right now. But um, they have, uh, you know, a couple of things, but they have these, um, the spray bottles. And, oh, here it is. Found it. This talks about it. Um, what do they call it? It's a, yeah, the Ultra Fine Continuous Mist Spray. Um, they have a pack of two of them, and it's this kind of like a pressurized sprayer. Um, and so it kind of gives it, you that nice continuous mist. I think this would be great for something like this too. Um, but, uh, I need, I need to order some. Debbie was talking about how awesome they are. And, um, but it kind of gives you that kind of more of a, an overall spray. If you're spraying like a large area, you know, it's not as concentrated in one area. It'll kind of go over a larger space and more of a fine mist. Um, but, uh, that's one place, but you can also buy your, your bottles, like your, your, you know, your various, you know, glass bottles and things. Um, I get mine at, um, you can look at Aroma Tools online. Um, they have, if you're here locally in Utah, you can go into their shop um, in Pleasant Grove near doTERRA. Um, there's also Oil Life and they sell a lot of the bottles and stuff. But you can find things on Amazon and other places too um, and just kind of get yourself a set um, so that you can make some of these things and have some of the ingredients that you would need on hand. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the, the basics is, you know, you, baking soda is used a lot, <laughs> white vinegar, um, apple cider vinegar, uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, the Castile soap is another one. Um, let's see, and then you've got things like, like witch hazel. That's another one that we use to, to make stuff. Um, salt. <laughs> you know, these are kind of some, some of the stuff is just like basic stuff that you use. And then of course, like the borax. And um, these are just things that I have on hand when I've, I've made different things. Um, and some of it's just normal kitchen stuff that you, you use. So um, there will be things that you will use again, but um, take a picture of the fruit and veggie spray if you want to on that one. And then, um, okay, so now we're kind of moving into bedroom. We've worked a lot kind of on like kitchen. Um, but the room and fabric refreshener um, or freshener, this you can use for literally just about anything. Um, I have like some of these, um, I don't know what kind of, I think this, I don't know if, what kind of material this is made of, but I've got little bottles like this that I, um, I will, you know, fill with just like water and lavender. Um, you can put whatever you want and you can make an air freshener. Um, you can use it to freshen up your, your bedding. Um, you can use it to kind of help you just to spray and get the aroma as you're going to sleep. We use these as like air fresheners in our bathroom. I travel with these, um, especially lavender because 
You can also use it for like an after sun spray, you know, um, you can use it as an air freshener for the bathroom when traveling. <laughs> so it's like a multi-purpose, a little freshener. Um, and it's, they're super simple and um, they're great to just, I have them just in different places of the house. Um, but also to like freshen up your, your, um, your fabric. Like I would think that the, um, uh, the purify would also be really nice. I was talking to a gal who, um, she's from Pakistan and um, they do a lot of cooking with uh, curry and various spices and, um, and it really, you know, puts a strong odor. She tries really hard to like open windows because um, it, it just kind of gets into everything um, and into your furniture, into your clothing. Um, so this is just, you could just take that and take like some purify, um, would be a really great one um, kind of instead of using something like for breeze to like refreshen your your things that are difficult to wash um, like your curtains or maybe something kind of has a trapped odor um, works really great for that but I mean literally you can use those I mean just whatever you like you can spray it you know fill it spray it and um, like I don't even know what this one is but I think this is like a two ounce bottle I don't even know what I had in here but it's just next to my bed <laughs> you know doesn't, it's not labeled, so I don't remember what was in it, but, um, but we use them all the time for stuff like that. So really, really easy to make, um, literally takes like 30 seconds. So, um, and that can be used just, you know, to kind of spray all over. All right, so kind of working in our, our living spaces and our bedroom and our living room, um, having a way to refresh in your carpet. And I totally want to try this, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, so it's basically a cup of baking soda, five drops of the purify oil. And um, you, if you have, um, you know, I've even seen like, if you, you know, those like Parmesan uh, cheese, like shakers, like you buy one that's like the glass one that has the little holes up top. That's really great for making something like this. Um, Cause that way you can sprinkle it versus like dumping it on your carpet, which would not be really great. Um, but yeah, you can just basically um, mix, um, sprinkle it on and then vacuum that and kind of give your, um, your, uh, yeah, your carpet a little refresh. Um, you know, cause I have, I have animals and stuff and just sometimes, you know, we've, we've had issues with animals um, peeing or, or pooping on the carpet and you, Oh my gosh, you try to get that out. Um, and I have used the, the oils to just help get the odor out. Um, so this is a really great thing that you can try. All right. Um, also looking at our bedroom, we have a mattress spray. Um, and this you can, um, you know, just especially if you've had a mattress for a long time, it's not one of those things you can really like wash. So um, I know that, uh, you know, we've had, we have mattress protectors and all of that, but sometimes things still have gotten um, through, um, which we had our, our dog, <laughs> you know, went in and um, peed on our, on our guest bed, which we didn't have everything on it anyhow. Um, and uh so, and I used oils to get the, get the odor and all of that out. Um, but this is something that you can use just to kind of freshen that up, give it like, like a spring cleaning feel um, to know that it's, you know, fresh. So uh, eucalyptus oil, cedar wood. Um, now you can use either witch hazel or if you have just like a plain um, vodka, um, it's just basically the alcohol content, which, um, will oh, what was i going to say on that the alcohol content just it just evap it helps it to the moisture to evaporate quickly um and so it doesn't you know get your uh, mattress like really wet um but you just mix that into a small glass spray bottle and shake it and spray um but just something else you can do to freshen up your uh, mattress all right so we're so kind of in bedroom um and or wherever you keep your shoes um and uh, i have three kids small kids i think this is something i'm going to try doing this spring um because my five-year-old loves to not put socks on and um and then he sweats in them and i get to his shoes and i'm like 
dude, why are you not wearing socks? Um, you know, your, your shoes smell. Um, and so um, I'm definitely going to try this with him. Um, but, but even just to kind of, again, freshen up, you know, certain things that maybe you don't necessarily wear socks with, um, like your, your heels or your sandals. Um, and uh, you just take some rubbing alcohol. It looks like half a cup of rubbing alcohol, 20 drops of the tea tree oil, um, which is Maluka, 20 drops of cypress and 20 drops of lemon and um, combine those together, shake, and then just spray the insoles and let them dry and kind of a whole deodorizer for your shoe. So I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> um, all right, and then um, this one, which I would like to try, um, which is a leather shoe cleaner. And this has a half a cup of warm water a fourth a cup of white vinegar and 10 drops of eucalyptus. Um, and so it says to clean your shoes first and then basically mix that all together in a glass spray bottle um, and you spritz the leather and then kind of like an old, some type of cotton and clean your shoes off and let them dry. Um, and, and then you can also do it again, it says, um, just to give it like more of a shine to it. So you can use it to kind of cleanse it, um, but also kind of help give it a shine. And uh, it does say just to, you know, just like anything when you're using oils um, on, if you're, when you're cleaning with them and you're unsure, um, like with wood, just, you know, testing it in a small area just to make sure that it's not gonna like ruin it. Um, and, or if you think it's leather and it's not leather, um, it says not to be used on suede or unfinished leather. So keep that in mind um, when you're using it. Okay, so this was the leather shoe cleaner and this is the leather shoe polish. So I think I confused myself. So they're almost basically the same, the same, oh wait, except this one has water. The leather shoe cleaner has water and um, has the vinegar. And this one has fractionated coconut oil. So that's gonna help help kind of it to nourish the leather. Um, and yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. I will have to try that as well. So these are things that maybe you might not even think about um, when you are looking at um, cleaning your home and uh, you know, just ways that we, you know, we, we don't think about the, the chemicals sometimes that we're using um, every day, like shoe polish or um, maybe jewelry cleaner. I just, you know, I thought about that the other day. I had some silver that was kind of tarnished and I don't really use a lot of chemicals, but then I have this like chemical, like jewelry cleaner. And my thought was, I, there's probably an option out there that's better than using this because I mean I, you open that thing and it just I mean it just the whole it like permeated my whole bathroom and I was like I use essential oils for pretty much everything so I'm gonna look that up <laughs> but just you know I think you know the intention is to just start having awareness around what you're using um, and, um, and just starting somewhere, whether it's just making one thing like an overall cleaner, you know, um, you know, or maybe you're someone who's already been using oils for a long time like me and, but you maybe have something that you're still using some kind of chemical for, um, to, but, you know, and, and maybe just trying and experimenting and seeing what you can find that would work, um, just as well without the chemicals. So I'm all about that. You know, if you can use something naturally um, and, it, and it works and it does what you're wanting it to do, um, then, hey, that's a, that's a winning, um, winning combination. So, and you're not exposing yourself and your pets and your family to those chemicals in your home um, because we have so much toxic exposure, um, not just from only from our, our, our food, right? From all the way down to the, the soil and how our food is growing, um, a lot of conventional produce and things. Um, but we're getting, you know, toxics just from the, just the environment and from the stuff that they, you know, that they are paint, you know, I mean, there's so many avenues that we're 
there's certain things that we can't control, right? Um, and um, this is one area of something that we do have some control over. And um, I think it's a great place to start and having that awareness of what are you cleaning with? Um, what kind of chemicals are you being exposed to? Um, and where you can limit that. And doTERRA has some really great um, options. And um, I would say just start somewhere, start small, and maybe it's just that you get this <laughs> on guard, cleaner concentrate. Um, I love this stuff. Like seriously, I have it in every single, like, you know, it's like 14 bucks and I've probably made, you know, I put like a tablespoon in here and I can't tell you how many tablespoons are in this bottle, but there are a lot of tablespoons. Um, and I don't know of any natural cleanser that I could go out and buy that would give me this kind of bang for my buck. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I can make a ton of it and, um, and we use it for, you know, just an all purpose cleaner, but you can also just easily take lemon oil, some vinegar, um, and water. And again, you have another cleanser. So, um, just, you know, there's some simple things that you can do and just start somewhere. And maybe like, as you're thinking about, you know, Earth Day or whatever, you know, your commitment to bettering yourself and your family, um, just starting with one thing and start implementing that. And then you could kind of add that and build upon it. So um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I hope you all have a great uh, week. I hope you have something that you took away from our time together. And um, because I think that, um, we all deserve um we all deserve to be happy and, and healthy and um and sometimes it starts with really really small things that seem insignificant but in the larger scheme of things um they really have a great impact on our health and well-being so um yeah say say yes to you and and make some small change so awesome thanks for joining me and i hope you all have a great rest of your evening all right thank you